This is our first one. So in this one, we're just going to talk flood hazards you know, analysis for risk assessment. So I basically want to kind of go, so the learning objectives here, we're just going to kind of go through the framework of a flood hazard for risk assessment. Um, we're going to describe uh, what a risk is, uh, look at, you know, defining what the flood hazard is. We're just going to kind of go to the basics of, again, flood hazard for risk assessments. We're going to do, and then we'll go through kind of what our topics are um, each day from day one, day two, day three, just so you have a general idea of the flow of the course. Um, but I just want to say with, as far as this is uh, for, for Derek and I, this is our second time to offer this course and we completely flipped the uh, um, agenda order. So we tried one thing last year, we're trying to something this year. So, you know, as far as the, the course order and the flow of material, uh, please feel free to comment. We'll have opportunities at the end of each day for um, a review time. So you can, uh, anyway, I'll get to that, but just be thinking like the flow of the course, does it work? Um, we're going to kind of balance that with what we did last year and see what kind of works better. All right. So according to you, ER, so this is a, a, a USACE engineering requirement, ER 1156. Your risk is defined as a measure of the probability of the severity of undesirable consequences or outcomes. So USACE uses the risk informed um, process for dam and levy safety program framework. So we, we've got somewhere around 700 uh, dams and over 14,000 miles of, of levees. And I think, you know, other agencies like FERC and other are going to be using more kind of like these frameworks. So um, we've got like kind of the three parts, the risk assessment, risk management, and risk communication. So for this course, when we're looking at coming up with the hazard, the loading curve, you know, we're talking about that risk assessment, that first piece, we're trying to come up with that first part. So the hydrologic loading curve, or you know, sometimes called the flood hazard curve, um, that's, our, that's our first uh, value in the, the equation here. So we've got the product of the function of curves for hazard performance and consequences. So again, what we're talking about in this course makes up a third of that calculation. It's kind of pretty, and pretty much defines a lot of the, the failure modes or, or what the risk is. So what we're gonna be looking at is, you know, how likely is the hazard? Um, so this class will discuss the theory of what goes into the flood hazard analysis. How um, are we determining how likely the hazard will occur? Uh, and then we'll go through some of the additional uh, fundamentals of executing, you know, flood hazard analysis from data collection from flow frequency analysis is all the way through our like our stage frequency that we do in RFA. So we'll kind of cover the full gamut of data collection, flood frequency or flow frequency all the way through stage frequency, kind of get through in and out of all the details of all that. <clears throat> so as a member of risk assessment teams, um, I know in the contracts, maybe in the, the, the contractors, you know, our goal is to create uh, a, a robust risk characterization, you know, using all the available data and methods that we have. So risk characterization is then used to support decisions. So we got, we got to make risk informed decisions, right? So it's important. We're not only understanding, um, but we're really, we're able to communicate our findings. We got to be able to communicate what we've, what our analysis are telling us uh, so that decision makers can make the best possible decisions. So hopefully in this class, we'll open up, you know, we're going to open up the hood of best fit RFA. We're going to do a lot of manual calculations, look at a lot of the equations, and hopefully we'll get a good understanding of the mathematics behind the software uh, that's used to develop the loading curves. So this in turn should help you hopefully better understand and be able to communicate your findings. That's kind of the goal. So there's two main primary purposes we're looking at. It's one to inform the credible, uh, you know, be able to extrapolate the, the curve, to inform a credible extrapolation of that loading curve that defines our hazard. And two would be to quantify the uncertainty around the loading curve um, so that, you know, risk assessments can better define the overall risk. So you want to know not just the, the actual loading, but the uncertainty around that. So this here is an FN chart we often use to communicate and understand risk. So we have the dashed line that represents the individual and societal um, risk based on extensive, it's kind of based on extensive research of a range that people or society can tolerate. So what risk um, are they willing to be prepared to accept in order to uh, secure benefits basically? So 
Above the line, we're saying the risk can't be justified except for extraordinary circumstances. Below the line, um, we're saying it's acceptable, right? So just looking at a quick example. So if we have a hazard or a failure occurred at the top of the dam, so we're looking at something close to the top of the dam, maybe overtopping in some cases, we trace that horizontally uh, across the, pot, the, the point of loading curve that intersects with the top of the dam, right? And then we trace that down to the annual exceedance probability or AEP. So from there, the AEP can then be translated to the FN chart. So it's important to understand what goes into making this loading curve, right? It makes up again, a third of the equation. So it, it, ha it can have a lot of influence on whether the hazard is tolerable or not. So in this case, if we assume uh, the middle part, the performance, the system response is a one. So we're just gonna say it's gonna, it's automatically. And our average loss, average loss, uh, our consequences are 0.1 to, to one, just kind of that first box. So. If that's the case, then we would plot this uh, right here on the FN chart, and we would say this is tolerable. Now, if, of course, if the life loss was out there beyond a thousand, um, you can see that it would be plotted above the the, the dashed line, the tolerable risk guideline. At that point, then we got to do make some decisions, right? There's some risk decisions that will go into it. The uncertainty that you provide plays into that. So, all right. So, kind of covering the class topics. Um, so we're going to start out in day one. We're going to be looking at a lot of the, the data that we put into um, our models. So from systematic all the way through our prior information, whether it's you know regional information. So we're going to start with our period of record data and, and kind of move from there. We're going to jump into uh, flow frequency. We're going to kind of break it apart and really look at details on how that's actually what makes up a flow frequency, how it's actually constructed. So from plotting positions to analytical probability distribution, applying frequency duration, and so on. So we're going to look at detail under that. Um, and then we're going to define mean hazard. We'll look specifically at that one because that that is our um, big driving number when we as our for our, our uh, final results. So we're going to look at the, the different names we call all that. It has multiple names. And then we're going to start into uh, the theories behind likelihood and Bayes' theorem. And so we'll end the day there. Um, hopefully, a uh, nice, heavy um, talk right at the end of the day. So that should that should go well. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll keep you awake, hopefully. So day two, we're going to kick back up into some more of the data. So looking at paleo data um, and how we use it, how we, how we do H&H &H with paleo. And then we'll look at uh, non-stationarity and climate change uh, and, and kind of how that affects into all of this. So day two continue, we'll, we'll look at regional, regionalization methods. So primarily regional skew and, and precipitation frequency and how we incorporate that into our um, flow frequency, volume frequency studies. And then we'll come back into Bayes' theorem um, kind of and recap Bayes' theorem a little bit with some uh, information on kind of how the different data, data points leverage as well as look at this uh, fun line here, the differential evolution, Markovo chain, Monte Carlo. So we'll break that apart so we can try to understand each individual part and then how it goes together. That is kind of one of the big backbones of Bayes' theorem. So, and then we'll jump into, we'll start transitioning more from best fit into RFA. We'll start, it's, this is a kind of a transitional point, this uh, looking at flow to stage for levees and dams. We use it for both programs. Um, from there, day three, we're primarily now looking at information and, and tools and, and algorithms that go into our our final loading curve, our RFA stage frequency curve. So we'll look at, again, just reservoir stage stores, discharge, how we develop those things. We'll look at sampling approaches for uncertainty. Um, that's really looking at the, the, the algorithms that go into that, the bootstrapping, importance and stratify sampling, things like that. And then we'll cover a couple case studies. One, this um, kind of our, our issue evaluation study, our, our preliminary kind of um, risk assessments for flood hazard, and then we'll look at one that's uh, for on the design side. So for design uh, dam safety modification, so making decisions on how to modify the dam and how H and H can kind of fold in there. And then we have that Q and A at the end of the day. So again, for this one, we're just talking briefly on the the, the framework of the flood hazards and what 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 we're really going to be looking at this week the, the flood hazard how we define it how we're going to develop it how important it is and you know and that's and that's it for this one